58 degrees out here this morning. It's almost a little cool in my short sleeves. <laughs> I love it. It's great. It's great. Oh, so uh, late last night, my four hex cubes came off the printer and I started four more hex cubes for my Lego minifigures, but I did not clean them or assemble them or do any of that stuff last night. And uh, let's see, I was so sore from being bent over pulling stuff, vines, things out of the ground yesterday that it was really rough between 10 and midnight. I was just really sore and I just, I didn't want, I don't, didn't want to take anything for it. So I just grinned and bared it, but I was miserable. Even Don took off his wedding ring because um, his fingers were a little swollen and stiff. So not sure what we're up to today, but I got out a slab of ribs for dinner and um, First up is get these guys all taken care of and then I got to do yesterday's video. I didn't take enough pictures yesterday, darn it. When I'm really, really busy, I don't take as many pictures. Well, I can't touch stuff because of the potential for spreading poison ivy around. That's really what it is. What you hear? It's a squirrely. Hey, Panther. Good morning, buddy. I guess you did okay without your heating pad on last night, but mom will be watching for those low 50s. Last night wasn't really a low 50s, but if it's a low 50s, mom's going to come turn your heating pad on for you, at least one of them. <laughs> He's got a few. When you're, you know, the senior kitty, you have, I see there's one, two, there's four up here, dog houses in the chair. Um... Don't really need them all, all the time, but snowstorm or something. Ah, it's nice. I was pulling some stilt grass. There's a, you can't see it, a cement water fountain over there. I emptied the water out of it, cleaned it, refilled it, and, um, you know, walked around. Didn't see any new deer damage. That was good. Like I said, pulled a little bit of stilt grass. It's amazing how much we've done and how many more areas I see where we could go do more like right in there we could pull some more vine probably one a day out here where we go in about another 15 feet and clean vine up along that edge over there I don't ever want to mess in there it's very shady and it doesn't have the scrub and it provides, you know, there's complete privacy, like there's no neighbor in that direction, even though there is. So I want to leave that alone, but. Anyway. No yard work today. Although I, my body can't take it. Although I do feel better after bending over and pulling some stilt grass those first 10 or 20 bends of the day. Usually we're picking up trash at the park. They tend to loosen everything up. It's a good thing. Yes! You gonna help me with my editing again this morning? You were such a good helper yesterday. How did you end up with two bowls? I know what it was when I brought in dinner last night. Breakfast wasn't completely gone and I left it just in case she would finish it. And apparently she did. So. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Good girl. Good girl. Well, video complete. Time to go for our walk. Gray girl is much happier. Hi, sweetie pea. Make it just as comfy as you can get it. While Don was finishing up his coffee, I put on the parts that came yesterday. Um... 
to you know I fixed the two window sills on the back side and I fixed the sunflower and I fixed the green parts here and there was an orange part missing down here and I still don't have the macaroni these two brown macaronis but um they're coming but yeah it's all all the parts that needed to be put on I guess I need to go get the one piece for here now um which I have uh and i'll do that uh or it's all fixed up so i'm ready for the slopes i'm like really really ready for the slopes now but it's nice to get both the sunflowers yellow we're headed to the greenway for our walk just driving through south park and uh it's a great morning to be out there on the ball field we're headed to the greenway and guess what's on the way to the greenway the garden hut <laughs> and nels has been posting some great pictures of new stock they've been getting in Yeah, one of the things she got in was a ton of new Japanese maples, the ones that are tall and in these wooden planters. But there were some small ones, too. I had Don get out of the car today. He's overjoyed to look at plants. That is a very interesting colored juniper. It's kind of shaped like a Leland cypress, but obviously not. Wow, it's really looking nice out here for fall. Oh, look at this guy. That's some kind of cypress here. It is uh, a bald cypress, maybe. The one that loses its, um, loses its um, needles. Rosa Sharon out here in the sun. Oh wow, now that color is really pretty with the dark center, but look at this color. So pretty. Kitten, is that a real turtle? And I was like, where? And I'm thinking to myself, come on, Donnie, there's statuary all over the place over here, but it, it really is a real turtle. <laughs> yep, yeah, he's, he's alive. He's looking at me. Well, goodness, that's the most butterflies I've seen all summer, pretty much. I've seen a few swallowtails down on our butterfly bush by the creek, and that's been about it. I guess as an alternative to mums, you could put out really pretty coleus because it's got such great fall colors. Don said it's an annual, it's not going to live, and that's true, but if you're just putting out temporary mums anyway, you might as well. Because I've never seen anybody get mums to live in the ground after they've brought them home. Look at that pretty color. Look at that pretty color. Wow. Hibiscus. Also tropical annual. Not going to live through the winter here unless you've got a place to put it. And then it's really pretty fussy about where it goes. So like under our house I've tried it. That bit it's not going to do down there. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Thankfully, I don't have to pay for Creeping Jenny. Well, I have to remember that any size or shape hook that you could possibly need, they have it here. I'm walking around the greenhouse. Oh, that's pretty, the green. I usually am a cobalt blue person, but I also like that green. You know me, I hadn't met something I don't like. <laughs> These plants back here are not for sale, it says. It's a fragrant tea olive. Osmanthus heterophilus kaori heme heim. It's very interesting. It grows about the size of the olive osmanthus I have at the house that I'm always talking about, but more compact and pointed leaves. He let me get a plant. Best husband ever. God, it's like a, do you see the size of the hole this thing's gonna be? I asked him if he was sure it came with a hole digging without too much grumbling out that had that little little pot that big <laughs> add it as uh item number 107 why you love your tesla you can buy plants and not have to rush home because you can keep them from getting too hot with climate on <laughs> it's a good thing it's not any hotter today out here in the sun there's a heron there with the uh ducks he's not normally so close i'm sure just as soon as i get up on the wood here he's gonna fly he can't be that used to people he likes fish he doesn't care 
he's not trained to think humans are a good thing. I've only wanted my big camera twice today now. There he is. Yep, yeah, he's going to fly. Well, that's still a pretty good yep. shot. Fly free, buddy. All right, it's Don's daily walk backwards talk. Right. And I'll try to stay within three to five feet so the audio is loud enough. Right. Sorry about yesterday's audio in the woods being a little low. Yeah, well, um, what I was, Mary and I have talked about, she asked me to bring up is something I read in the paper. You know, Saturday I don't get the physical newspaper. I have to use the online newspaper, and there's more stuff online. And so I was in the extra section, and they talked about the... Uh, California starting in 2024 is going to ban the sale of gas mowers of uh, trimmers chainsaws uh, uh, blower uh, blower so the this yard tools yard tools the, and that's all well and good but the commercial people are basically pitching a hissy fit and you, you would say well those big old nasty big corporations with thousands of workers uh, doing landscaping tough for them, but that's not the case. It's it said there's 51,000 one-person small businesses in California that are landscapers. So what we're really talking about is those folks are not are going to have to quit using gasoline shortly. Obviously, the equipment they've got they can continue to use, but at some point it's going to wear out and they've got to go buy something. So I told Marianne. I think that the, it's misplaced. They really ought to give incentive. Oh, they're gonna, they're trying to talk about programs that they're gonna have to help these people out. I would rather them have like cash for clunkers for homeowners. Get rid of all the gas powered lawn equipment that people have in their garages because the professionals are gonna have a hard time because the price of batteries. I mean, it doesn't do any good to have battery powered lawn equipment if you have to fire up a gasoline generator on your truck. But it's coming, trucks that can charge your uh, well, batteries. That's true, but again, back to the point, 51,000 one person operations, they probably aren't driving brand new $120,000 pickup trucks. They're probably driving 15 year old used pickup trucks that were commercial vehicles to start with. So I'm just saying, I think they ought to reconsider that. I'm all for electric lawn care equipment, but I... Right, we love our ego stuff. If you've got, you know, a two acre or smaller yard, we can vouch that you'll be super happy switching to well, batteries, uh, powered equipment. Our ego stuff is great, but well, this is beyond the homeowner. Right, well, I have no idea. They did not say how many people cut their own grass. I, I just assume at this point, the way they were talking is everybody in California has a lawn, lawn uh, care company. I, I don't know, but if that's if that's the case, then I guess you have to go with the commercial. You can turn now. I'll let you off but the hook. The, um, but if you if you cut your own grass, why not get the homeowners to get, give up their stuff first? Because the commercial guys are going to have a really hard time. You can still attack them down the road but start with the low hanging fruit first get the people cash for clunkers trade in your old gas lawnmower tree you know get a $25 discount or a coupon or tax rebate or something do it that way right um yeah I don't like to see us go off in these directions with an assumption that these policies are n just automatically should be assumed to be great um, maybe they are maybe they aren't but the thing that concerns me the most is air quality in the cities and you know if we can get more electric yard equipment in the cities and also noise uh lowering noise decibels of the electric equipment is at least some some less i think that's a good goal but I, I worry about these ultimatum policies. So we'll see. We don't have to fight it here in North Carolina yet. I mean, I think in some applications it would be a good idea to 
next time you need to buy equipment homeowners certainly to switch to battery like I said I would vouch for our equipment and uh, Raleigh has a program now where they have some green crews in the city center I'd certainly like to see the guys at South Park switch over we can you know we don't have to start with this ultimatum but we're not how about let's just get them to switch over the blowers and put uh, chargers in the concession stand areas at the parks and then, you know, move it out from there. Yeah, trying to tackle the zero turn, especially like those guys, that's all they do. Is right. They run in their zero turn basically the entire time. That's going to be really, really hard to do electric. I mean, you can't pop a battery out of a zero turn lawnmower. Those aren't 20 pound batteries. Those are going to be a couple 300 pounds of battery so there's no lift it out and swap it so you got to have a fast charger well most homeowners even if you have a tesla wall charger at home it's only going to charge at seven and a half kilowatts that's probably not long enough to charge a uh, zero turn mower in 15 20 minutes so it's almost like we've got to have fast chargers at as Marianne said, all these parks that it's got to be have the grass cut, but I think this problem's mute. This is the other reason why I do not. Believe yeah, yeah, yeah. We were going to circle around to this. Right. This, there, this problem's going to solve itself. You don't have to do anything. I've watched these videos on these robotic lawnmowers, the Luna. And Luba. 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 Yeah, our friend Andy has Andy's one. Got one. And I've seen. Uh, let me just say this: in ten years. If, if they make as much progress in the next five years as they made in the last five years, in 10 years, the only crazy person will have a gasoline-powered lawnmower or landscaping service are the people who just want it that way. Because everybody else is just going to plug their, let their little robot cut their grass at night. Yeah, well, I hear around here it's hard to get people to come cut your grass on a consistent basis. Michelle doesn't cut her own grass. And over the last five years, there must be 10 different guys that they've hired to come do the grass and to get them to show up when you want them and do the job that you want. In most cases, I think they just stop showing up for her and then she has to go find somebody else. So if she could hire someone to come install the Luba for her yard, um, well, I think, I think she would go, first. I think she'd go that way. I think these Lubas and these R RTK, all those people, they better enjoy, better strike while the iron's hot because uh, Tesla's going to come out with a robotic lawnmower with vision and AI. You won't have well, to Well, it's do just going to take the FSD software and apply saying. it to the lawnmowers. If somebody hasn't already told Elon he's missing out on a big opportunity there, they should go get in his face. Someone he'll listen to, they should go get in his face about it. Right, that's exactly what's going to happen. So, I, as I said, it's the same thing with the, the light rail in 2016 when they passed that thing. I said, folks, before you even can get your first rider on that silly light rail, there's already going to be autonomous buses. And now, granted, there's not autonomous buses, but the UNC Charlotte has that little thing. Yeah, I forget what it's and called, right? Are, Cassie, yeah. Castle, Castle, Cassie. The yeah. thing we rode at Bond Park. Right. Yeah, is, there's one down at UNCC now. Well, let, how much longer do you think it's going to be before there's, instead of four or five big 40-foot uh, diesel buses running around with bus drivers, that there's not a fleet of 30 or 40 of these little Cassie things running around UNCC. Right. Well, I would certainly prefer the smaller vehicles that arrive more often and have less trouble navigating city streets mixed in with passenger cars. Right. And then the other thing is, if you, if you look at your whole transportation thing, then you've got all these little, you know, the, instead of having buses, you just start with the low-hanging fruit and you keep the bus drivers in the places where you need them but all these little ancillary things you can convert them over to self-driving so as i said this problem's going to fix itself light rail isn't ever going to fix the problem yeah we don't need to get rid of 
gas lawn equipment or the zero turn mowers. Can't you just see one of these little robo mowers at South Park? Well, look at the drones. It just runs around inside the fence and keeps the ball field. Well, look at it in the Ukraine. They don't send one little drone out there. They send a hundred drones. Well, you're going to have 50 little lawn mowers at a large park. And these little, they may be the size of a dinner plate. I don't know. Somebody right, I'm sure the size can come down and if Elon gets involved, the price can come down to manufacture them. And so, yeah. Well, that's the, that's the and just to say, they're all obviously battery powered, use GPS, have a little charging well, station, etc., etc. Well, there's going to be a mix. I yeah. mean, it's going to be, some of them will be great big robotic ones that's cutting big parks and then the little stuff like this guy right here yeah you know what does he care it starts cutting after dark and it gets done before he's done the next morning does he care it finished at four o'clock in the morning versus 3 30 just like charging an electric mow car. your grass while you sleep Please. like you charge you your really car <laughs> and all it's got to be is cheap enough for him to afford it so it's all about the batteries straight in front of the walker or turn and run turn and run and how many more are there besides this one? Oh, there's a baby or another one behind. Yeah. Okay, I think just two does, huh? Yeah. <laughs> It'll be better if they went to the left, to the right, it's closer towards civilization and the road. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Hey guys, I need my counter. I'm gonna do Lego. You're basically taking up the whole counter. Especially you. My bricks were in the mailbox, the slope bricks I need. Yay! I got the slopes put on and some of this brown built out. And um, all I can really say is these corners, all four of these corners are really tight and it took me longer than you would have thought. Um, but it's done now. It's all, it's snapped in place. It was just very, there's a jumper brick and it was a really tight fit and it was kind of annoying. Um, I'm ready to build up farther, but it's dinner time now, so I'm putting it up for now. Mm -hmm.